Well, uh, you may have uh, noticed that uh, 340 through Harper's Ferry is uh, no longer an active route. <laughs> Uh, in order to get through Harper's Ferry, you've got to go around this. They uh, say in Boston you can't get that from here. You know, so they say so that's <laughs> Harper's Ferry right now, uh, getting you, through it. You have a wonderful Boston accent, Rob. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Hilltop House, it, it begs the question, uh, how are the construction vehicles getting uh, into Harper's Ferry to handle the work that's got to be done there? I asked uh, Karen Schaffeld to join us from Swan Properties as they are the people doing the Hilltop House work down there. Karen has been with us several times in the past, along with Fred. Today, it's uh, Karen Solo. Karen, good morning. Thanks for being with us again. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. How are you? I'm doing great. I think of you every time I munch on one of those delicious, kind uh, bars that you folks manufacture. <laughs> so, oh, it's, it's fabulous. You're always uh, make, with me. Make sure to stop and uh, eat at Kava. Uh, whenever you're, you see one available, because that's also one of our investments. Oh, good. Everybody loves kava. Yeah. Yeah. Great stuff. <laughs> hey, uh, so with the construction shutting down 340 through Harper's Ferry, how is that affecting the construction of the Hilltop House right now? Well, luckily, um, we're not uh, in, in full active construction. We've been working on many of the um, adjacent uh, armory houses, historic lodge, what we call the barber shop, which is one of the um, the older buildings on on the property, so most of that has wrapped up at that at this point, and we are now waiting. Um, we've been doing we we haven't been sitting still. We've been getting all of our engineering construction drawings and everything submitted to a third party reviewer, ready to go into the state for permits. So we are in a a slight lull. A, um, a slight law. So luckily, the 340 construction hasn't affected us um, too badly. Did the pandemic set you back in terms of your time frames? Absolutely. Um, well, <laughs> as you know, there's been a lot of delays over the years. Um, but oh, yeah. yes, the pandemic did, and, and in a couple of ways. So, <clears throat> so for instance, the cost of the project um, initially was around $120 million. During the pandemic, uh, supply chain and um, wage issues and um, just inability to get materials had driven the cost up to $180 million, which we could not have done. So we had to go back to the drawing board, figure out, figuring out re-engineering, using different materials. Um, luckily, over time, this has, this has come down to about $140 million for the project that we are we can do it's a stretch but we are moving forward so it, it did delay it 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 was a blow i was i was very concerned but i'm i'm feeling optimistic again did the delay set you back months or years as it uh, adds up well um the one thing that really ha could affect the project at this point is that banks are not loaning. Um, and so to get a construction loan is a real issue. Um, so we're trying uh, creative ways of financing um, to be able to pull this out to get the construction loan. If we're able to break ground before the end of the year, we're on target for a spring 2025 opening, which would be pretty darn amazing because there aren't any construction projects happening in most of the country. So that would be quite quite a gem for um, for Harper's Ferry and for attention to the state of West Virginia. You mentioned the increased cost because of supply chain and inflation and such. What about the interest rate financing on this as we've seen interest rates soar over the last year? Well, I mean, that's that's the problem. You know, that's why banks aren't lending. Um because the, their cost of money is expensive. And then for something like us, we have to look very carefully at what the interest rates are. So that is, that is a problem. Um, and we're working, trying to work through it. We're trying to think creatively. And um, we'll, <laughs> we'll keep working at it. Um, I, I, wish I, could, I wish I could tell you what is going to you know, sort of shake out of, of our efforts, but, but uh, we're not stopping. We had heard something about maybe a TIF, some TIF uh, financing going on in Harper's Ferry for this project. Is that an active pursuit? Yes, it is. And um, this was approved by, um, by the legislature. 
and now has a vote coming up in Jefferson County to approve what the legislature did. Um, it's very significant and important uh, because it and it's 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 a tool that's been used quite a bit in um, to promote economic development because what it does is it says here's the taxes your property taxes you're paying now and if you do this development there'll be the assessment on that property will be something higher but we're going to put that into a fund which then you can you know use as a benefit to the project so it is significant it's important the project wouldn't happen um, but for this getting done but the county and the state and Harper's Ferry, no, nobody would be getting any benefit from this unless we get this project done. So it's it's a real hand-in-hand sort of effort. And when did you say the vote was, Karen? Uh, October 5th, I believe. Do you have any idea right now in terms of commitments, who's for you and who's against you? Well, we, we have an idea of, of people who believe that they <clears throat> would support us. Um, we know that there's probably some who... Or still have questions. We've met individually, um, put people in my team with every person to explain to them exactly how this works and why you would want this type of sensitive historic economic development in Jefferson County and what the benefits are. So, I mean, for instance, without this being done, um, you wouldn't have the huge economic benefits of the project, which um, our latest uh, feasibility reports say there'll be 115 jobs minimum starting level at 55000 a year. That's $6 million a year in annual wages, um, which will be coming into the county. And then there's $1.2 million a year in hotel motel taxes, which will go to Harpers Ferry and Jefferson County. So, you know, it's just huge. And, and that's not even including <clears throat> the construction during construction period, which is 200 jobs and $2 million in taxes, which will be paid. So, you know, you have to believe that if, if people believe in economic development, they believe in, you know, bringing, you know, good jobs, tourism to this area, um, that they'll vote for making sure we can get this project done. Now, both of my co-hosts have stayed at the old Hilltop House, and they have their own interesting stories. I'll let, it's up to them whether they want to relate them or not. But, uh, Bill, why don't you tell yours first? <laughs> yeah, the, this is before you folks took over, and it was the olden days when the walls were paper thin. And uh, my wife and I were there for the U log light in, in Harpers Ferry. Uh, we missed the U log light, light, lighting, but we were entertained the whole night by a uh, a couple in the next room. And literally, the walls were so thin we had everything except video. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it wasn't it was an interesting night. So the next day at breakfast, it was a challenge, not a challenge. It was interesting trying to pick out among every down at, everyone at breakfast who our next door neighbors had been just on the voices alone, and we were able to figure them out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I promise you the walls will be much better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that. It, it was worth the price of a mission <laughs> with the paper-thin walls. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, Matt, you stayed there as well with your wife, you were saying. Yeah, my wife and I stayed there within a couple of years. Of, they were uh, our neighbors. <laughs> as it turns out. <clears throat> I didn't know you'd recognize that voice, Bill. <clears throat> no, 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 no. It was a few years after, I'm sure, Bill and, and his wife had stayed. But, uh, yeah, shortly after we got married, we went down and spent a weekend in, in Harper's Ferry. And uh, uh, just a really neat, neat place. And, in, in, you know, the, the my wife is... Uh, into antiques and and all of those types of of things and uh, you know just the layout of the the building uh, the the dining area where we ate it, it was a neat stay and so I'm glad to see uh, you know what you all are doing to uh, help preserve that in Harper's Ferry. Karen, well, I'm, it's it's I'm the sorry. stories that that people tell. I'm sorry, it's the stories that people tell really about their fondness for it that really keep me going. We had a. a, a um, person contact me who told me that her grandmother was 93 and she wanted to celebrate her next birthday there and I said I am working as hard as I can um, to, to bring that to fruition but you know worst comes to worst if we're in the middle of construction I'll put a little tent out and, nice. and her grandmother can come up but there's so many people who are so passionate about it and and, and honestly I, I can't walk away from something that so many people care about. 
Karen, uh, we're all aware that in the uh, three or four years or so ago, you had to use the West Virginia legislators to bypass uh, the resistance you're getting from Harpers Ferry. Uh, is Harpers Ferry, the government of Harpers Ferry, more cooperative, more responsive now than they were, say, five, seven, eight years or so ago? Well, I, I have, yes, and I have so much respect for Mayor Vaughn. Um, he is is a wonderful visionary leader of Harper's Ferry. Um, we are working very closely with the town now. And, and in particular, we even have a, a path, which will be coming from lower town up to the overlook, which we are preserving for the benefit of the town or anyone who visits. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very optimistic um, about going forward. Mayor Vaughn is, is really been very helpful and, and you know, Fingers crossed, uh, we'll jump through some of these hoops. But I, I, I'm very, very happy to work with the town. So the uh, uh, going back to a conversation you made earlier, uh, the greatest impediment right now is that a financial. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And you're getting that worked out at the same time you talked about the drawings and so forth. Uh, what type of changes did you maybe have to make to help bring that price back down? As you talked about the original cost and then how it soared through COVID and now making some adjustments to get where you are now. Were they major adjustments? Well, I mean, our, our building originally had a lot more steel. Then during COVID, the price went was going up of steel, so we we looked at more uh, concrete construction for more of it, and now we have a blending, part steel, part concrete, um, something that takes advantage, too, of some newer engineering techniques. I, we were very lucky to, to bring in some engineers that said, you know, this is a, a great opportunity to use this particular type of construction. We said, yes, it is. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's just, just one example. But... Um, but we wanted to make sure that nothing we did was going to affect the structural integrity of the building because we want this to last for well over another 100 years or so, if not more, um, or the customer experience because you still should be able to walk in and feel like you've walked into a place that's been there for a very long time that has the antiques, that has the ambiance, that has the, the historical feel. So we feel that with what we've done, we have not changed what will be the customer experience? One way that you're doing that is uh, the uh, demolition of the exist existing building to get to the point where you can redo the construction. You basically took that apart almost uh, stone by stone, correct? We did, and if you would uh, go on site now, you would see large pallets of these stones that have been very carefully constructed so that when we start, we start building up again, they will go back into approximately the same places where they were before and what's so interesting we have a local stonemason his you know his father his uncle his grandfather his great-grandfather they've all been stonemasons masons and he was so wonderful um at showing us oh here's where this was hand cut you know here's this angle here's how this fit onto the turret because we're putting the turret back in place you know exactly you know right where it was um so it you know it, it was like watching this man work with history every day it was it was really quite amazing did you find out at all uh, with that type of lineage had any of his uh, relatives worked on any of the construction at that site before good question i think i'm going to have to ask him it's possible it certainly is possible so the impression i'm having karen is if someone had that has not seen the uh, hilltop house say 55 50 or 60 years or so ago and after you get it rebuilt they walk up to site and remember the site as it uh as if as they remember it yes as okay. if if we've done our we'll be doing our job correctly people will will still feel the the historic nature of that and and feel like it's something they remember yeah. Are you making a uh, documentary film about the reconstruction of the Hilltop House? Well, we're actually, um, we, we've taken quite a bit of footage, both of when we did the, uh, the deconstruction and the salvaging, um, and also just trying to get some people's stories about it. Um, we're documenting as much as we can, and, uh, and we'll continue to. And whether that turns into something as... 
maybe it's just for the purposes of people who are interested in history and we put it up on a, a website that we build so mm-hmm. people can see it. Or maybe it becomes something um, additional to that uh, that tells the story. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's important that we document it. This began for you and Fred in, what, 2007, Karen? Well, we started assembling the pieces around 2006 um, because, as you know, there's probably like 14 individual pieces of property that constitute that hilltop. Um, and, uh, you know, have, we've gone through various iterations. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's been a it's been a long time. Is it typical that someone trying to develop a property would go 17 years and still have the desire to do it? Um, I haven't heard of many projects that would last that long. And and I guess most people would have packed up their tent and gone away. But um, this is a labor of love. So I, you know, maybe lo- love and craziness. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but, um, but it's important. It's really important. And the, the opportunity to bring this back, that something that was so influential in history, this this hotel in particular, and the idea that great poets, writers, thinkers, presidents, um, politicians all came to this place. I mean, we're, we're going to reconstruct that, and and I think Harper's Ferry needs to you know stand up again in its place in history, and, and we we can be part of that. Realistically, when you started this in two thousand six, what did you think yeah. the end date would be? I think we probably felt like in four or five years we would have jumped through all the hoops. But um, but really, I mean, part the beauty of, of having a historic development is that it's historic development. The problem is that there wasn't zoning. So that sort of led to the whole process with the town and the eight years of the ordinance rewrite. So... At, at minimum, even if things would have worked out with the town, it still would have taken eight plus years. Bill? Yeah, Karen, uh, you mentioned labor of love, and when you and uh, Fred have finished this, there's going to be something that the people in Harpers Ferry can take great pride in. Uh, there's a similar, there's an analogy in Shepherdstown with Steve and Harriet Pearson with the old opera house. Uh, they've renovated a, a historical building, costing a lot more money than anticipated because of uh, various things that happened, the uh, pipe breaking and the like. Uh, but they they did not walk away either. Uh, they stayed with it because the same way that you described it is a labor of love. Uh, so I think we as a community owe a lot of gratitude to folks like you and the Pearsons that have ensured that an old dwelling has not dis- disintegrated but actually can be have a renewed life for several years, for several generations. Well, you know, just keep uh, keep praying for me, okay? Because <laughs> I want to get this done. I want us to, again, Rob. I mean, I, we we got to sit down at the bar and, and have a drink and oh, yeah. talk. We so. will. We we will for sure. When when you get that place finished, you let me know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was. Uh, now that having a drink does that is that invitation extended to Matt and myself or just the two of you? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I want to hear some more stories. You gentlemen are fun. Uh, I have to admit, I cleaned up my story quite a bit <laughs> because I realized. And if we have over drinks, I'll tell you the full story. <laughs> All right, it's a deal. Karen, thank you so much for your time this morning, and please say hello to Fred for us again. I certainly will. Thank you so much for your time. Karen Schaufeld from Swan Properties and the Hilltop House in Harper's Ferry, uh, which uh, we hope to have done within a couple of years now. Finally, the the end may be uh, within sight. That would be great if that would happen, that wonderful property back up in, uh, in business again.